Here's an example of how your note should be set up for this section, 9-6, solve quadratic equations by using square roots. What is the square root property? By the end of the video, we will be able to answer this question. Okay, I want to remind you to pause the video at this point and make sure you write down all the information and then when you're ready to follow along with me as I explained to you, then you can pay attention. Here, we have two numbers multiplied by each other. We're just going to work with positives at first. 3 multiplied by 3. Another way to draw, write that is as 3 squared to the squared power. And if we simplify 3 squared, we would get 9. Therefore, that's what that arrow means, is therefore, the square root of 9 will equal positive 3. I want to remind you guys that there's an invisible 2 for the index, which means you take out pairs of number, and 3 times 3 is a perfect pair. So it's the square root of 9 is going to equal 3. This is what we call the positive square root of 9. Well, similarly, if we take negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, that would also be negative 3 squared, and we know that negative 3 squared, if we simplify, simplify, we would get 9. Therefore, if there's a negative square root of 9, our answer could be negative 3, which gives us our negative square root of 9. So when you take the square root to solve an equation, you must find both the positive and negative square root. This is indicated by the symbol plus or minus and the square root symbol. And it kind of looks like it's not completed, so it goes like that, okay? So you'll be using this symbol throughout this section. And I notated the correct the answer in the bottom of the screen. Plus or minus the square root of 9 would give you plus or minus 3, the positive and negative square roots of 9. And now here are some examples of using the square root property. Let's look at the first one in the upper left-hand corner. If you had x squared equals 25, well, if I said solve for x, that means you want to solve for one single x, which means you want to get rid of the square. To do that, you need to use the square root property. I will square both sides, square root both sides, and the square root of x squared is going to give me just x, and then the square root of 25 would be the plus or minus square root of 25, and that would give me x equals plus or minus 5. Notice that the square root is the inverse of squaring a number, so if you see an x squared, to get rid of the squared, you take the inverse, which is the square root. That's almost like the inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of multiplication is division. Well, the inverse of something squared is going to be the square root of that something. Now let's look at the next example up here in the right side of the screen. You have x squared equals 16. If I want to get one single x as my solution, I will take the square root of both sides. And then I'll have x equals plus or minus square root of 16, which would give me plus or minus 4. And now I have a more complicated example at the bottom of the screen. Let's say that you have x minus 2 to the squared power equals 81. Well, just as I mentioned before, the inverse of a square is the square root. So if I take square root of both sides, I'll get rid of that square there. And it becomes x minus 7 equals plus or minus square root of 81 x minus 7 would then equal plus or minus 9 because I'm going to simplify this side. And then I would add 7 to the next side and then have 7 plus or minus 9 and that can give me two solutions. 7 plus 9, 7 plus 9 would give me the 16 and then 7 minus 9 would give me the negative 2. Now, in the next video for this section, I will discuss how we would use the square root property to help solve quadratic equations.